Saturday and Friday, yeah. that they the Israelites according to the Bible. Now, we say you might be an Israelite according to the Bible, but ultimately, we got to go into the Bible to prove it, right? So, right. the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 is the blessings and the curses that were said to befall the children of Israel if they, would, uh, if they, wouldn't, if they would or would not listen to the Lord's uh, obey his commandment. All right, give me the book of Deuteronomy 28 and verse 40, 45, right? Deuteronomy 28:45. This is the book of Deuteronomy 28 and verse 45. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed. Is the curse a good thing or a bad thing? It's bad. So the Lord is saying all these bad things are going to happen to you, right? Keep reading. Because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee, and right. they shall be upon thee for a sign. For what? For a sign. One more time. For a sign. So, I look at the, the restaurant, right? There's a sign that say taste bar, right? What, is a, what does a sign do? A sign shows you or indicates what something is. So these curses are upon the, the Lord's chosen people for a sign. So they help you identify who these people are, right? So, uh, we got to figure out, we got we to gotta pick up on some of these curses to see, to, so I can prove to you who we are according to the Bible. So give me uh, Deuteronomy 28 and verse 16. Deuteronomy 28 16. This is the book of Deuteronomy 28 and verse 16. Cursed shall thou be in, thy city, in the city, and cursed shall thou be in the field. Right? So who is cursed in, who is cursed, who is cursed in the field? Right? Who's cursed in the city to this day? Wherever you go in America, in every great in every great city of America, every country across the world, who you gonna find in the slums and the ghettos? That means something. That means something. Keep reading. Curse shall thou be thy basket and thy store. So like you give me uh verse 48. Verse 48. Therefore shall thou serve thine enemies. Which the Lord shall sin against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness. So the Lord said, because you transgress my covenant, my laws, my statutes, and my commandments, right? You shall, you shall, you have, you shall serve your enemies and you shall go to your enemy in want of, uh, in hunger and thirst and in nakedness, right? So when you go to the grocery store, who you got to go to to get your food, right? The clothes that's on your back, who you got to go to to get that, right? Water. America. This country, this world is the only place we got to pay for water That's right. that comes free, right? Keep reading on that. And in one of all things, so you want to get uh, a car, who you got to go to? You want to get a house? You want to get a death certificate, a social security number. If you want to go to college to get a good paying job to provide for your household, you have to go to somebody else. Let's say you got an entrepreneur mindset and you want to get a business, right? That's taste bar. That's the so-called black-owned restaurant. Where do they have to go to get the the produce that they use to cook to make their money? Who you think they paying? Who you think they paying this spot for? Right. So in one of all things, you got to go to this enemy that the Lord said He's going to send against. That's right. You, right. Keep reading on that because there's more on that. And He shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. Put a what? Put a yoke of iron upon our neck. Now, there's only one people, one specific people that had a yoke of iron put on their neck. And that's the so-called black man, Hispanic man, and indigenous natives via the transatlantic slave trade, right? So, America, we had yokes of iron put on our neck here in America. The indigenous Native Americans, who uh, we call Indians here, so-called, they were shipped to the European nations. And then in the Americas, our Hispanic brothers and sisters were sent to, to Spain. That's why they speak Spanish and they call themselves Hispanic or Hispaniard, right? So again, this was a curse. That's a sign to indicate who the Lord's chosen people are, right? Give me uh, verse 64, right? Deuteronomy 28 and verse 64. 
and the Lord shall scatter thee among among all people. The Lord shall do what? The Lord shall scatter thee among all people. Now the brother said earlier, you can find the so-called black and Hispanic man in every single nation. Moses just prophesied of this over 2,000 years ago, right? So it's got to mean something. Let's get another heavy hitter. And this is something that our people deal with at an alarming rate. And this has got to be a big red flag, a flag to indicate who we are. Give me verse 54. Verse 54. This is verse 54. So that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eyes shall be evil toward his brother. His eye, he shall love his brother. His eyes shall be evil toward his brother. Now we should all get along. His eyes shall be evil toward his brother. What's black on black crime? Why is it that you can find a gang in, in every single hood where we at? It's always us killing ourselves, right? His eyes shall be evil towards his brother. The most I said, this is going to be a curse that I'm going to put upon you because you didn't want to obey me, right? Keep reading it because there's more on that. And toward the wife of his bosom and toward the remnant of his children, which he shall leave. So I, I, I let the brother read too long on that. He said, towards the wife of his bosom, who's the one nation who... Chiefly, who's the nation who's known for treating their women uh, horrible, right? What do our rappers rap about? And it ain't, it's not just, it's not just so-called black man in America, right? You got Hispanic rap, you got uh, uh, Jamaican rap, Haitian rap. We all rap about the same thing, drugs, money, right? And violence, right? But this is a curse that the Lord put on the so-called Israelite man, right? Keep reading on that. And to the remnant of his children, which he shall leave. And who's who's known for fatherless households? It's 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 some hey, it's me it here. It's me it here. Give me uh verse sixty eight. Deuteronomy twenty eight and verse sixty eight. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. So we got to figure out what this Egypt is because in the in the Bible in in the book of Deuteronomy the Israelites had already been delivered from captivity slavery. Uh, from Egypt. So we got to right. figure out what that Egypt is saying. It's really saying. Give me that. This is the book of Exodus chapter 20 and verse 2. Oh. I am the Lord thy God which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Out of the house of bondage. Out of what? Oh. Out of the house of bondage. So everywhere in the scriptures where you see the Lord mission Egypt, he's talking about a particular place. So are you from, you from Houston? So let's say you got robbed. So let's say we homies. And you got robbed uh, in Third Ward, right? And we out and about. We downtown. We're going to Taste Bar. And I say, and I'm joking with you. I say, all right, I'm going to drop you in Third Ward. What, you, what, what, what am I saying? So when the Lord spoke of Egypt, what do you think was ringing through the Israelites' minds? All right, let's read it. Let's from the top. So with that understanding, let's start it over. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Uh, uh, bondage, slavery, is a bondage again with ships. With what? With ships. With what? With ships. How did we get to America? Wake them up, Op. How did we get to America? Wake the up, That's the Hispanic man. How did they? How did they get to? How did they get to Spain? And we have accounts. We have actual uh, museums where we have the the slave ships that we were on preserved. Right now, was was the Lord talking to black men? Was the Lord talking to Hispanic men? He was talking to all men. Give me uh -huh. the book. Give me uh, give me the book of um, Isaiah chapter forty five. No, la. Uh, give me the book of Deuteronomy chapter twenty nine verse one. This is the book of Deuteronomy chapter twenty nine and verse one. These are the words of the covenant which the Lord commanded Moses. To make with the children of Israel. No, all men. To make with the children of Israel. No, with uh, uh, just a few nations. To make with the children of Israel. The Lord is talking to one specific people. That's right. You want to know who his chosen people is? It's the Jews. All right, Salaki, I got I to gotta continue dealing with my brother, right? So, 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 Salaki, Salaki, give me 1 Corinthians 13 and 40. 1 Corinthians 13 and 40. 
Jews come from Jerusalem. 13 and 40. Do everything, we do everything decently in order. Hey, look, everything decently in order. Hold on. Bear, bear with me, brother. Bear with me, brother. This is the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 13 and verse 4. Hey, we all do everything decently in order. Hey, hey, black people are not the chosen people. Jews are. That's why I don't rock with Kanye. Because guess what? Jews are the chosen people. Black people, we kill each other. What's that? What's that? What's that? Hey, but, I, but I'm black, so I love my black people. Oh, yeah, yeah, the truth shall be served. Hey, hey, brother. If you don't believe it, hold on, brother. If you don't believe in what we're saying, hey, just, just keep it up the street. Y'all don't own this Just keep it up the street, brother. Y'all don't own this why would you want to? Why would you want to come here? here? Hold on, brother. Don't leave. Don't leave. Hold on, brother. Give me Mark four and fourteen. We don't rock with time yet. All right, give me Mark. Give me Mark four and fourteen. It's first Corinthians thirteen and forty-one. You know what? Right, Mark four and fourteen. Listen, to, hey, brother. Listen to this. Read. This is the book of Mark, chapter four and verse fourteen. The soul is told the word. And these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. Uh -huh. But when they have heard, uh -huh. Satan cometh immediately. So what? Satan cometh immediately. What is this book? Satan cometh immediately. What is this book? Satan cometh immediately. What is this book? Satan cometh immediately. And this brother got Satan on him, man. He's trying to take the word away from you that's being sown. Right? So completely ignore this brother. Don't allow him in this drugged out of state. To pull you away from what you're learning right now, brother. And that's all Satan is trying to do. Satan is trying to pull you away from getting the understanding you get. Right? Hey, uh, so just listen to the word, brother. Ignore him and listen to the word, right? Right? Read that. I'm going to die by Jesus. Verse 14, 13, and 40. I can put my life on the line. I'm going to die by Jesus. Not over y'all, Mr. Screwing Bible Scripture, but I respect y'all. You don't own this book, so I can say whatever It's the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 14 and verse 40. That's what I'm Let saying. all things be done decently and in order. And what? And in order. And what? And in order. And what? And in order. All right, so hey, the, hey, the spirits come out when the Lord, when the words of the Lord come out, man. Right? Here you go, King. Uh, hey, hey, uh, the water, the water, the water is thank you in the Hebrew. Thank you for uh, uh, enduring, enduring Satan, you know, trying to uh, uh, take away the word where the word is being sown. Right. So just to recap. Right. Deuteronomy 28 reads the, the curses that were said that before the children of Israel. These are prophecies. Right. That the Lord will, ha will happen to his people and that these curses will be upon his people for a sign to help you indicate who you are. Now let's now what I was asking you was if you identify and your spirit bear witness with these curses that these things happen to your people and they and the and these happen to the Israelites, what must that make you? Say it one more time. Khan, that's that make you an Israelite, right? But understanding that you're an Israelite is only half the battle. Because when the Lord comes back to destroy this place, he's going to consume everything in it but his people. Okay? So give me Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 12. Because now we got to... Go ahead. It's the book of Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 12. And now, Israel, what does the Lord thy God require of thee? Start at the top. One more time. And now, Israel. What's your name? What's your name again? Stacy. And what's your name? Okay. Uh, read it one more time. And now, Israel. And now, Stacy. And now, Waddell. What does the Lord thy God require of thee? So now we got to figure out what the Lord requires of you now that you understand that you are the people of this book. That's right. But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, to keep the commandments of the Lord. To do what? To keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. Right? And that's what the Lord requires of you. Give me uh, the book of Sirach, chapter 2, verse 16. Sirach, chapter 2, verse 16. Go ahead. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 2, and verse 16. They that fear the Lord will seek that which is well pleasing unto him. Right? So we got to seek that which is well pleasing unto the Lord. Right? So, what is the will of the Lord? Give me Psalm chapter 40, verse 8. Psalm chapter 40, verse 8. We got to figure out what the, what the will of the Lord is. We got to figure out what the Lord requires of us now that we understand that we are his people. 
Go ahead. You got that? Yeah. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 40 and verse 8. I delight to do thy will. Oh my God, ye, thy law is within my heart. That will is in the heart. Thy law is within my heart. The will of the Lord is the law. Give me uh first Kings or Second Kings two and three. Let's see the first Kings two and three, second Kings two and three. Give me uh two and three. First Kings two and three. First Kings two and two. All right. Come on. One more one more witness on that. We're gonna get a third witness. Go ahead, bring it up. This is the book of First Kings, chapter two and verse two. I go the way of all the earth. Be thou strong, no, death. Verse 3. Verse 3. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God. Keep the charge of the Lord thy God. Keep keep the charge of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and his testimonies as it was written in the law of Moses. In the law of what? In, in the, the law, law of Moses that thou mayest prosper in all that thou doest and whithersoever thou turnest thyself. Right, so the will of the Lord is the law that was given by way of Moses, right? So in the spirit of coming back to our our customs, our nationality, right? The feast days that we kept, the way we dressed, right? How we treated ourselves, we got to figure out what some of these commandments are so that we can start pleasing the Lord the way the Lord wants us to be pleased and not the way we feel like we should please the Lord. Cuz that's ultimately that's what that's what Christianity has done. What it did was it made your relationship with the Lord something subjective, something that is, is individually based and can be defined with whatever you want. But the Lord ultimately told us how he wanted us to serve him and what it means to actually serve him. Give me, you got That's right. Uh, go ahead. Start at, uh, give me 11 and 1. All right. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 11 and verse 1. Right. And the Lord spake unto Moses and to Aaron, saying unto them, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, These are the beasts which ye shall eat among the beasts that are on the earth. So now we're about to figure out what the Lord wants us to consume, right? Uh, verse 7. And the swine. What swine? Or kind. Keep reading. Though he divide the hoof and be cloven footed. And it's saying, Though he divide the hoof and be cloven footed, because cows divide the hoof and be cloven footed, and cows are clean. Right, so though he may look like a, he may have features of a clean beast. Yet he chewed not the cud; he is unclean to you. Right, and that's because they don't properly digest their food. You know, they don't have sweat glands. Right, they eat anything. They're scavengers. Right, and that's something that we eat at a very. Uh, um, that's something we put in everything. Yeah. Right. Uh, give me verse nine. Right. So, can you can you put down the pit? Do you eat pork? Do you eat pork? Hey, can, can you do that for, can you stop doing that for the Lord? Kind, 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 kind. All praise to the Most High. All right, verse 9. These shall ye eat of all that are in the waters, whatsoever has fins and scales. What? Fins and scales. Keep reading. In the waters, in the seas, and in the rivers. Them shall ye eat. Right, so now we got the, the commandment of the Lord on what we can eat that moves and lives in the waters. With something that we eat, that we love as a people, that does not have fins and scales. Because the Lord said, whatever we eat in the waters has to have fins and scales. Catfish, that's one. What else? Catfish has fins but no scales. It's slimy. And they're, they're what, what are they? Sca uh, uh, catfish are scavengers, right? What, what else is there? There's a lot more on that. Season, what's, what's he go ahead? What'd you say? Crawfish. What's what's called what's what's crawfish cousin that we like that we love? Crawfish, crab, shrimp, crab, lobster, oyster, right? All these things don't have fins and scales. So the Lord said we can't eat them. But there's wisdom behind that because He said we can't eat these things because these are the things that make us sick, right? Why don't why don't why don't you allow your pregnant women to eat shellfish? So the Lord didn't explain all this in the scripture. He just said, don't do it, right? Why is it that your children can't eat shellfish? Well, you know, children are allowed to do it in America, but you're really not supposed to let your children. Uh, uh, pregnant pregnant women and children aren't allowed to eat shellfish because shellfish are high in iodine, and that and that, that'll uh, deteriorate and destroy their mind. 
and they'll grow up with uh, mental disabilities, right? But the Lord understood that, and he said, don't do that. Give me uh, do, uh, uh, Exodus chapter 31 and verse 8. We'll get the Sabbath day commandment, uh, right? We got to get the Sabbath day commandment because we out here on the Sabbath. We out here on the Sabbath, the Lord's day, a day of rest. Nah. Give me 35 and 1. Exodus 35 and 2. It's the book of Exodus, chapter 35 and verse 2. Six days shall work be done. Uh -huh. But on the seventh day, there shall be to you an holy day, a Sabbath day of rest to the Lord. A Sabbath of what? A Sabbath day of rest to the Lord. Keep reading. Whosoever doeth work therein shall be put to death. So it's an important, it's important thing for the Lord. Uh, let's get a second witness. Give me Exodus chapter 31 and verse 16. Alright. You there? Yeah. It's the book of Exodus, chapter 31 and verse 16. Wherefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath. Shall do what? Shall keep the Sabbath. No, nah, they can do whatever they want on the Sabbath day. Shall, shall keep the Sabbath. They can work, cook, clean, cut the grass. They can do whatever they want to do on the Sabbath day. Shall, shall keep, keep the Sabbath. Sabbath. Keep reading. Shall observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. And the word perpetual means forever or everlasting. So that's a cut to the Christian doctrine where they said you don't have to keep the laws of the Lord because the definition of the word perpetual means forever. Right? So can you keep the Sabbath day for the Lord, a Sabbath of rest? Chill out on a Saturday, you know? Now, ultimately, we're not saying, you know, walk, march into your job and talk to your boss and tell him, hey, look, I'm an Israelite. I ain't working on Saturday. That ain't what we're telling you. We're telling you to strive to keep that day. You know, so can you do that for the Lord? Kind, kind. So give me uh give me the book of um Sirach. You right, you right, through the spirit. When does the Sabbath day begin? Because because that's another stronghold that we got on our people. Well, what day is the Sabbath day? It's Saturday, right? Well, brothers on fire. Most most people say Sunday is a Sabbath day because that's what was given to us in religion. But if you pull up your calendar. Sunday is the first day of the week, so the seventh day is a uh, uh, Saturday. But when does the Sabbath day begin? That's another question. Huh? Friday when? Genesis one and five. Brother sharp, man. Kind. Well, let's you sharp, brother. You you right on point. But let's get into the scriptures just so we're on the same page, right? It's the book of Genesis, chapter one and verse five. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And the evening what? And the morning and the evening were the first day. The evening and the morning were the first day. So every state, every everything must start in darkness spiritually, right? Everything starts in darkness. So the day starts in darkness, right? That's when all things are new. Because back in ancient days, what did we use to tell time? Esau said at 12 o'clock, midnight, that's a new day. But what changes? Right? And through the spirit, I'll give you an another example. So in a in American custom, January is the beginning of the year. But in Hebrew, in our calendar, the first the, the month of Abib or uh, April is the is the beginning of a new year, right? It's it's the the, the beginning when things uh sprout, right? right. New life forms, right? right. That's when Things new happen. So something must change for, for, for uh, a new day to come, right? Give me uh give me the book of Numbers. No, no, no. Give me Sirach chapter uh, 17 and verse 11. Right? Because ultimately, you there? Yeah. Go ahead, bring it up. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 17 and verse 11. And it reads, Beside this he gave them knowledge and the law of life for an heritage. He made an everlasting covenant with them. And showed them his judgments. You see? Uh, that, no, that's it. Uh, so he gave him the law of life for a heritage. So this law, Torah, uh, the first five books of the Bible, these were our customs. These was our our, um, our Sabbaths, our feast days, right? Uh, uh, it, it has uh, uh, how we treat each other, how we dress, right? This is how we live. And all of these things were taken away from us via the curses that I talked about, right? So let's get another law or another custom, your custom, as an Israelite, according to the Bible, Numbers chapter, give me Numbers chapter 15, verse 38. 
And this is gonna be this is gonna be pursuing the how the brothers dress. This is how we're supposed to dress. It's the book of Numbers, chapter 15 and verse 38. Speak unto the children of Israel and beat them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. Right. If you look, if you look at every brother out here, we all we all got something in common. Every brother got them fringes on. Keep reading on that. Throughout their generations. Throughout, no, 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 no. Just in the time of, of Moses. Throughout that generation. Now, when Christ come, you ain't got to do none of this stuff in the, in, the, in the Old Testament. Throughout that generation. Throughout that generations. So your, your grandfather, your great-grandfather, your grandfather, your father, you, your children, your grandson, you got to put these fringes on. And that's, that's a sign between you and the Lord, right? Keep reading on that. And they that put upon the fringe a border, a ribbon of blue. And that's why all the brothers got a, a, a ribbon of blue on a, all the fringes, right? So this was our heritage. This was our custom, right? These are things that we did. This is what our God told us to do, right? But there's wisdom on that. Give me a... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Keep reading. Verse 39. And it shall be unto you for a fringe, that ye may look upon it, and remember all the commandments of the Lord. And do what? And remember all the commandments of the Lord. Lord. So the wisdom behind the fringes is symbolic for remembering the commandments of the Lord, right? So, you know, it's and it's also a spiritual thing, right? It also helps you identify who your brothers are, right? Every now and then, every blue moon, I see a brother walking around with some fringes. And I yell across the street, shout out, right? Because I know that's a brother. That's a brother with understanding, right? So it's also a, a, a it's duality. Sign. It's a sign. It's a sign. It's you know, it, it helps you identify. It, it breaks curses, yeah. right? Uh, give me, uh, you got another commandment? Yeah, I do. Go ahead. Bring it up. It's the book of Leviticus, chapter 19 and verse 27. Wow. Ye shall not round the corners of your heads, neither shall not mark the corners of thy beard. So that's also a commandment. It's, that's why every brother up here got hair on their face, right? And some of the brothers grow more beards than others. Like this brother here, you know, he got real, real thick and mighty beard, right? But, you know, my brother right here, his, his, his beard a little thinner. But you grow what you can grow because it's all praises to the Most High God. That's what our Lord, our Father told us to do. All right? Can you, can you grow your beard, brother? For the Lord. For the Lord. For the Lord. Not for me. But because our Lord told us to do that, right? And ultimately, it's a, it's a, it's a, get the, um, that in first Samuel. Badge of honor. Man. That, it's a badge of honor. The beard is a, is a manly badge of honor. That's why the Lord wanted us to, to have a beard on our face. Uh, I got it precepted. Uh, first Samuel. What's that, uh, give me, uh, Uh, Leviticus, bear with, bear with me. Second Samuel, Second Samuel, Second Samuel, chapter ten, verse four. You got that? Yeah. Go ahead, read. It's the book of Second Samuel, chapter ten, and verse four. Read it. Wherefore Hanun took David's servants and shaved off off Salaki. Wherefore Hanun took David's servants and shaved off the one half of their beards. So, so uh, um, these in this time there was uh, some brothers that had their beard shaved, right? They had a clean face, or a piece of their beard was was clean, and cut off their garments in the middle, even to their buttocks, and sent them away. And did what? And sent them away. Keep reading. When they told it unto David, he sent to them, meet them. Because the men were greatly ashamed. They were greatly ashamed because a piece, a portion of their beard was shaved off. That's how important it was to have a beard in our custom, in your custom, right? Keep reading. And the king said, Terry at Jericho. The king said, what? Terry at Jericho. The king said, nah, you can't come back. I'm going to let the Bible talk. Keep, keep reading. Terry at Jericho until your beards are grown. The, the king said, Terry, King David said, Terry at Jericho until your beards come back. Because that's how important that was for us. Right? Right? So, so uh, uh, it's important to keep these, it's important to keep these commandments. It's important to grow so a beard. 
Uh, let's get into, you know how to pray, brothers? How you pray? Right, well, let, let, me use, let me use an analogy. So in basketball, right? You play basketball? Back when you was coming up in school, you had a coach. And you had a homie. He was real good, real talented. But all he knew was street hoop. And he came and wanted to join the team. What, what was what's the first thing the coach tell that player? Say what? He said, "Look, I understand you know a lot and you damn good, but you gotta let go of everything that you once knew, and you gotta learn how to do this the organized way." That's right. Right. Because what the script say? Uh, uh, First Corinthians 13, 14 and forty. Do everything decently in order. The Most High don't. The most high don't say come as you are. The most high said you got to come to me a certain way, right? In ancient times, when you went to go talk to the king, because the Lord, the Father is your king, how would you come to the king? Kind of, you know, right? So we got to figure out how we're supposed to come to our king. Give me that. Let's, let's, let's figure out how it is that we're supposed to pray to our God in our custom. You got that? Go ahead, read on it. It's the book of 1 Kings, chapter 8 and verse 48. And so return unto thee with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their enemies. So in them curses, the Lord said he would send an enemy against us and we will serve our enemies. And, and, and this said, in the land of your captivities, where are we today? All right. Which led them away captive. And pray unto thee toward their land. Toward their what? Toward their land. So you're supposed to pray to your God towards the holy land. Where is our holy land? Huh? And where is that? To the east. There you go. There you go. So one of the stipulations, right? And we know in the book of uh, First Thessalonians, uh, the Lord told us to pray without ceasing. So if you're driving, you know, we don't recommend, you know, it, in, in the scriptures, whenever you're at home, you know, a scheduled calculated prayer and you have a, a space that you can go to where you're in private talking to the Lord face to east just to give reverence to your Lord and give respect to whom to whom is due. Keep reading. Which thou gavest unto their fathers and the city which thou hast chosen and the house which I have built for thy name. And, and, and you already established, you know, where that city is. Right. Uh, keep reading. Verse 54. And it was so that when Solomon and made an end of praying all of this prayer and the supplication unto the Lord, he arose from before the altar of the Lord from kneeling on his knee. No, what? From kneeling on his knee. So now that's the second that's the second part. So we got to face the east. We got to kneel on our knees before our king, our Lord. Right? But it's a little more on that. With his hands spread up to heaven. No, with his hands together like we learned in Christianity. With his hands spread up to heaven. So we pray to our Lord, you know, bow with our hands open to receive the Lord, right? Everything is spiritual. So let's get the importance on why we follow what, 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 uh, uh, what the Lord is telling us in this book. Give me Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. No, 15 and 4. You got that? This is the book of Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. But whatsoever things were written aforetime. So all things that were written aforetime, right? Were written for our learning. Were written now. So just we can do it if we want to do it. Were written for our learning. Keep reading. That we through that we through patience and comfort of scriptures might have hope. Right? So we gotta seek the way of our forefathers. We gotta seek, we gotta seek the way we did things before. So in the book of uh first Kings, right? You had you had uh, the you supposed to kneel on your knees, face the east, and spread your hands up to heaven, right? So that's the way you're supposed to pray. But there's one more, one more on that. First Corinthians eleven. Go ahead. It's the book of First Corinthians <laughs> chapter eleven and verse three. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, right? And the head of the woman is the man, okay? And the head of Christ is God, okay? Every man praying or prophesying. Having his head covered, dishonored his head. No, nah, he can pray however he wants. Dishonored his head. 
Mm, no, I don't think the Lord is gonna care if you pray with your head on, with your head covered. Dishonor his head. So the script says you dishonor the Lord if you pray with your head covered. So when you praying or prophesying, wherever the, the scriptures are coming out, you know what I'm saying. Wherever uh, um, uh, uh, godly discourse is happening, you want to remove remove your head covering, right? So that you can give reverent honor and glory to the Lord, your Father, right? So can you do that for the Lord? Kind, kind. All praise to the Most High God. Come here, Shalom. Come here, Shalom. Come here, Shalom. Come here, Shalom. Kind, kind. So um, do you have any? Let's get. Okay, let's go ahead. I'm sorry. What's that? And I've never, I've never pondered the thought of Israel, Israelite. Uh huh. Uh, I've always thought about, so since I was born a Negro and then came into African American and then uh, it's black and all of these titles, and I'm asking, what am I? You know, and I'm just listening to what the Lord called me for many years with no direct identification. And so now, my heart and my mind are kind of lined up, and it's like something is something is happening. All praise, God! All praise to the Most High God. Something that I need to delve into a little deeper, trying to find more understanding and 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 how it relates to me. Give me Psalms chapter one eleven and verse ten. Con, that's that's right. Uh, everything you're saying is right, but ultimately. These scriptures are how we understand and how we come up on what actually is right, right? But you said, you know, your heart and your spirit is seeking that which is right. And you want to understand. Well, I'm about to give you the bread of the life in explaining what the Lord told you to do to be able to get that understanding that you're looking for. Okay. We'll get, we'll get that after this. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 111 and verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Come on. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. One more time. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. So the Lord said a good understanding have all they that do his commandments. And I, if, I'm being, if I'm being honest with you and giving my testimony to you, right, the more I keep the most highest commandments, the more I search out, the more wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that he's given me over time. So in order for you to learn, you got to start keeping these commandments. Uh, Aaron, you had a precept? Yeah. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 30 and verse 21. And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, this is the way. Walk ye in it. Nah. Say it one more time. This is the way. Walk, walk ye in it. it. Right? And this is the way. This is the way that you want to walk in. Keep reading. When ye turn to thy right hand, and when ye turn to the left, ye shall defile also the covering of thy graven images. And that's that's it on that, right? So this is the way walk ye in it. You, did you have any questions? Can you can you what can you uh before you go, can you tell me can you can you tell me and recite some of the commandments we gave you? Just to make sure we're on the same page and you walk away with understanding. Right? Right. 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 None of this. Say that. Say that last part one more time. Right. Right. And that's love. You mean Leviticus nineteen and and uh, seventeen? Okay, go ahead. Uh, Ham, because you said we always thought we was like Negroes, right? But they really know that we not. I'm going to show you. Right? Well, African, right? Tell them what book that is. This is the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary, right? So we ain't put this together. They, they did, you know what I'm saying? And it's a Ham, the youngest son of Noah, born probably about 96 years before the flood, and one of the eight persons to live through the flood. He became the progenitor of the dark races, not the Negroes, but the Egyptians, Ethiopians, Libyans, and Canaanites. All right. So I was basically bringing it out to show you, like, even though we look similar, like we dark skinned like them, they even know we're not the same people. That's why they still don't like us. 
And that's the ultimately that's the reason why the Lord gave us curses to be able to identify. Because when you go to Africa, right, it said the progenitor of the dark races, but not the Negroes, the niggas. Okay? So the what other race of people are dark? But what other race of people are not called Negroes? Right? So there must be a difference, and we must not be the same people. If you go to Africa, if you go into African nations, right, you have some African tribes who live in peace, but you have some African tribes that have evil eyes towards their brothers and they deal in violence. That's how you know who the Israelites are. But curses ultimately said that his people will be scattered into all nations. So with that, uh, I'm going to pass the mic to the next mighty brother, right? The water, the water. Thank you. Come here, Shadow. Oh, that's right. Come here, Shadow. Oh, that's right. Who are you? 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 Who are you?